let me make a question to you and, and every other ex-Muslim out there. Uh, and I say this respectfully. Um, uh, and we could continue on and <laughs> talk about all sorts of things. But my question to you is, is what do you, what does one have to lose from believing in Allah in the last day and just being part of that Muslim community? And I know you can't, you can't speak for everybody out there, but maybe you could speak for yourself about, about like my experience as in what I went through after leaving Islam. No, no. Just like, like, what do you have to lose? Like somebody for me, cause obviously it's not the first time, like the thought of atheism has obviously come into my head when I was exploring religion and talking about science and all that and studying science. But I thought like, wh what do I have to lose from believing oh, like in God? Like, let's say, let's say that the Islamic narrative, hypothetically speaking, it was all wrong. And mm -hmm. when somebody dies, they just go back into the dirt. Mm -hmm. Okay, you lived, I, I would say you still can yep. live a fairly good life. You find peace mm -hmm. and solace in your prayers. You have a community, you know, you, you have a good food at iftar and stuff like that. Whereas if the other situation, if it was the other situation, let's, let's say that what the atheist discourse says is, is, is not true and the Islamic discourse is true, like in the afterlife, you'd be a lot worse off. You know what I'm saying? So my question is just like, what is, in your opinion, like, what do you have to lose from becoming a Muslim and practicing your faith? Okay, so it's the Paschal Wager, you know. Uh, I would say when when one ties oneself to a specific religion and specific book, especially a religion like Islam, where it mm. uh, pushes a book uh, written in seventh, in the 7th century as the literal word of God, you're also tying all your uh, all your metaphysical ideas, your... Uh, your understanding of reality to it and you get stagnated then also your morality gets tied to something that's written in the seventh century and you might be stuck and you might not be able to evolve out of this it hinders progress i mean i can give a few examples like the the application the sharia law is like obsolete in our in our in our world in my opinion mm -hmm. or like the for example like our understanding let's say about homosexuality has evolved with science and stuff and uh, whereas religion would still push them as sinful people or you know they should be killed according to some schools of thought mm. uh so i think Different, like yeah. religion can stagnate the human discourse quite a bit by tying us to ideas and beliefs that are firstly have no grounds to be claimed to be objectively true and it gives you a, a false sense of uh objectivity which isn't really there and it affects all different uh discourse like i mean it, it'll affect like how you like for example like in in Pakistan and Turkey it, we don't even teach evolution in school because of religious bias and religious beliefs mm -hmm. right? because I, if you actually think of it there's so much evidence behind it and like it forms the basis of modern biology mm -hmm. I didn't even know what evolution was till I came to Canada because they never taught us mm -hmm. they just skipped the whole mm -hmm. chapter mm -hmm. you know so it will hinder people in ways that they might not realize and it also like for example if you see the worst countries for treatment of women uh the the last 20 the worst 20 about 18 of them are muslim majority right and then if you also look at the best or the happiness index in a lot of countries you notice that the more religious they get kind of like it also has a correlation with the with unhappiness or you know uh, people not having the best living standards and i mean you can say that it, atheism has no morality and whatnot uh, but like if you actually look at the statistics the crime rate is much much lower in let's say the scandinavian countries or japan or singapore with mm -hmm. the less religiosity too and there's a lot of these correlations obviously some of them are not objective mm -hmm. or there's other yeah, factors, yeah, I mean, like political economical because mm -hmm. you can say that it back in the 13th 14th century where the islamic golden age was going on it was a center and hub of uh, science mm -hmm. and then there's other arguments which say that they suddenly stopped progressing because certain theologians like Ghazali and some other people came up with some interpretations or opinions about, let's say, mathematics, playing with numbers mm -hmm. or certain sciences being the work of shaitan and stuff, right? Um, I mean, I would say, like, uh, I like to know what's true. I care about intellectual yeah. honesty and intellectual course, discourse. Course. And that's, yeah. I would rather be honest with myself, then uh, tie myself to an ideology and then have no reflexivity left, you know? Yeah, I would. I mean, I see that. Um, I, I find like I take a slightly different perspective in the sense that I see our uh, just an example, like our Western notions of, of right and wrong and what's legal and illegal as constantly in flux, constantly changing. And in my opinion, the, the Quran holds us back to that one uh, objective truth. 
And that doesn't mean that you you can't explore other things or you can't learn about other things because the Quran directs you to explore and to, to explore the world and see the demise, I guess, of the people before you and to reflect on the creation of the universe and, and all these things. Um, but I guess the way I would see it is that our senses are so limited to a certain extent that we can't, and you said you're, you're a seeker of truth. Uh, and, and, you know, like, I think our senses are so limited that we need something beyond that or we'll maybe potentially never fully know the truth, right? And that's, I think, in my opinion, where revelation comes in. And I know people, not everybody agrees that, you know, revelation is a thing, but that's that's kind of the Islamic narrative.